Hello, everyone, and welcome to the RV Inspection and Care podcast. And today's podcast is about cold weather tips for RVing. Now, before we begin, let me invite you to subscribe to my podcast so you don't miss any of the great information coming up. And don't forget to visit my website at rvinspectionandcare.com for even more great RV life information. Now let's talk a little bit about cold weather and RVing. Maybe you live uh, in an area where you really only use your RV in the warmer months. And so through the winter, you store it. Well, in that particular case, there's not much to talk about. Just winterize the RV, and that way any cold uh, air that comes down is not gonna do any damage while it's in storage. But, Suppose you like to use your RV in winter months, and maybe there are occasions where there are blasts of cold air that comes down to where you're going to be camping, and it could be a problem. Or maybe you actually live in a cold climate, and you're in your RV there. Well then, what we're going to talk about today, the tips we're going to cover in this podcast are really good for you because we're going to talk about ways you can stay comfortable in your RV and also make sure that your rig is protected and safe in cold weather. So let's get started with tip number one. And it's a simple one, really, but it's one that people a lot of times forget about Uh, when they should be thinking about it. And that is when you park your RV, let's say at a campground or someplace you're going to stay, then try to park it in a way that you're going to get as much exposure to the sun as you can in the wintertime. Now that's just the opposite from the summer, right? In the summer, we're looking for any shade we can get. But in wintertime, get, get the help of that sun to heat up your RV for free during the day, and then that'll set you up for uh, a nice night as well. So park your RV to get use from the sun. Now the next tip that I want to share is about insulation in your RV. RVs do come with some insulation, but it's not great, and it certainly doesn't compare to home insulation in any way. But when you're Uh, in an RV, you can actually add to that. You can augment that insulation in some ways. For instance, uh, there's an idea that I came across from an RVer who used a product called Reflectix. And I've talked about it before in some of my videos. It's essentially bubble wrap that has a cover on both sides. And they took the Reflectix and they mounted it on the wall inside their cabinets and their closets. So they actually placed another layer of insulation inside these closed in areas. And they said it really helped uh, with their RV and the insulation factor. The other thing you can use Reflectix for is to actually cut it to size and put it in your windows. If you find that your windows are not double pane and you're, you're losing heat through them, well then put a little Reflectix in the window. The only problem with that is that Reflectix doesn't allow you to see through it, so there is a good chance you're gonna have a kind of a dark RV inside. Now, way around that is another RVer just decided to use good old bubble wrap, and they just covered it with a shrink plastic and put that in the windows. Now, you can't see outside your windows very well, but it does allow a certain amount of a light in, so you're not really dark inside your RV. So these are ways that you can insulate the inside of your RV in cold weather. Another way to provide some more insulation is for your fan vents. You know, really, there's nothing much up there except a thin layer of plastic on that lid keeping the cold air from coming in on your heat escaping. So they make these insulated pillows, and you can find them on Amazon, that you just stuff right up there in that vent uh, fan, and then it just seals it right off. It it makes a nice insulated area, and when you're done, you just take it right out. It's very simple and easy to use. We use it all the time in the wintertime, so I highly recommend that. Now, you also have a skylight where you can find that hot air and warm air is escaping as well. 
I don't know of any pillows made for skylights, but I have seen folks use styrofoam. If you cut it to the right size and fit it up there, then maybe there's a good chance that you can seal that hot air in and keep it from escaping through the skylight. Now let's talk about your RV tanks, you know, your freshwater tank and your waste tanks. These are critical because they're usually underneath the RV. And also there, there could be air going up underneath and all of that. Now, some RVs come with the uh, tanks that are covered. You know, there's a, actually a floor under them that seals them off from any air. They're not open and exposed. And that's a great thing. But suppose you have an RV where they're kind of open underneath. Well, then I highly recommend that you find some foam boards at a home improvement store and do your best to seal that off down there because that will keep your tanks uh, warmer and then will help them keep them from freezing. The other thing you can do is consider installing heating pads on those tanks. They're very easy to install. Again, Amazon has uh, these, these products. You just use adhesive and put it to the bottom of the tank and then you connect it up to a power source. It's kind of like an electric uh, blanket for your, your tanks. And that works very well. If your tanks are, are uh, they have a cover underneath, you know, so they're protected, very often the manufacturer will provide a vent that goes down to that area. Uh, so that when you're running your furnace, there is some warm air that'll go down to them. That's a big help. So if that's the case, look for that vent. If the vent is there, open it up on those cold days. Now, um, the next thing we want to talk about is how you're getting water into your RV because uh, and into those tanks. Because if you have a, a water hose connected to your RV and it's really cold, that's a good place for the water and the hose to freeze and then freeze into your RV as well. And you really don't want that. So if you're going to be in a really cold area and it's going to be a kind of a, a long-term thing and you want to keep your water hose connected, well then I suggest that you use a heated water hose. You may not even know such a thing exists, but the reality is that it does. So again, Amazon has those. You can leave your hose connected all the time because it's staying warm. The only thing to remember is, again, on each end there are connections and you've got to make sure those are taken care of too. Maybe use heat strips on those or at least insulate them in some way so that the water uh, you know, still can flow right through the hose. Now in extreme cold, uh, here's another idea. You can actually, instead of using the city water for your water, you can connect up your hose, fill up your fresh water tank, and then disconnect the hose, empty all the water out of it, and store it in a warm place. And then you use your water pump to provide the water out of your fresh water tank. And that works great. When the water gets low, you just take the hose out during the day when it's warmer and uh, fill up the freshwater tank again, and then get the water out of the hose and store it back again. It's a little bit of extra work, but it really makes sure that there's no ice that can come into your pipes from some connection outside. Now, let's talk about the waste uh, dump bay that you have. First of all, let me mention this. I don't recommend having your sewer hose connected during the really cold weather all the time. Uh, instead, it's a good idea to just dump when you need to. Um, and uh, therefore, you just disconnect your sewer hose and you can put it again where it's, it's in a nice warmer spot. And in the dump bay, you still want to make sure you keep those valves nice and warm because they can freeze in place. So again, heat strips can work in those areas. Or something that's worked for me is I've just used a mechanics light, you know, that uh, an auto mechanic might use. And I put it in that bay and turn it on incandescent light and shut the bay door. Just one light will keep it nice and warm in there and keep those 
um, valves from freezing. So that's an idea as well. Now inside the RV, you do have areas where plumbing is running through cabinets. Like for instance, in your kitchen, usually there's uh, some plumbing lines that's going in there around the water heater and so. In the bathroom, well then you might be, it might be good if you're really getting a serious hit of, uh, of cold air to open those uh, cabinet doors and let the warm air from the RV go in there and make sure that those plumbing lines stay warm as well. Another tip is uh, we all know that you can use your uh, furnace, your RV furnace to stay warm in the winter time. But if you use it all the time, you're gonna spend a lot of money. So I highly recommend the use of a space heater. We do. And you know, if your RV is fairly well insulated, you may not even have to run your furnace at all. We really hardly ever run the furnace. So a space heater can do the job. And if it's electric and you are staying in a campground, then probably the electric that runs the heater won't even cost you anything, as opposed to the propane that uh, runs your furnace, that costs you something. So give that a consideration. Now, if you're going to be in a, an area for a while and you're in your RV, let's say you're in a, clo a cold climate for a long time in your RV, you may want to also consider getting some uh, throw rugs to put on your floor and insulate your floor a little bit more. There is nothing worse than uh, you know waking up and get, putting your feet out there on that coal floor either. So, and, and even so, just walking on a coal floor, well, that coal just radiates right up through you. So consider getting some, uh, you know, some throw rugs that go on the floor and make it nice and insulated on the floor and keep you insulated from the bottom of the RV. The other thing is if you're staying in an RV for a long time in really cold weather, it's a good idea to have some skirting around the bottom of that RV because that's where, you know, that cold air is coming right underneath your RV all the time. It's a, a good way for that cold air to do more damage. So skirting it keeps that out and that's a great idea. Now, for those of you staying in RVs through cold weather, you might also want to take consideration about your slides, because think about it, slides are right out there in the weather. That floor of the slide can get very cold. So I have also seen folks that use some kind of foam board and they tape them underneath the slide. They cut it to size for the slide and tape it in place underneath and that insulates the floor of the side. Just remember that you've got to take those out before you put the slide back in. You know, when you're, if you are going to stay in cold weather for a long time and you're going to buy an RV, one of the best things you can do is make sure that it has what's called a four seasons package. That package will come with the necessary equipment to protect your, your waste tanks and your water tank and all the plumbing lines in your RV and things along that line. So that's a great investment is to get that Four Seasons package for your RV. One other point too, if uh, you're in cold weather for a while, be very careful with any plastic component in your RV, especially the ones on the outside. Uh, if you think they're easy to break normally in cold weather, boy, they will break very fast. So always treat plastic components very gently and carefully in cold weather. On your tanks, I recommend don't dump them, you know, don't pull the valves and leave them, uh, let everything go out as it goes. Uh, don't dump them until they're almost full. Why? Because the more that you have in the tank, the less opportunity it has to freeze. So let your tanks kind of fill up mostly full and then dump them all at once. That helps. The final suggestion I'm going to have is really not for your RV, but it's for the engine that propels your RV. If you're in cold weather and you're going to be there all winter long, 
consider a block heater for the engine, whether it's in a motorhome or whether you have a tow vehicle, consider a block heater because let me tell you, starting engines in really cold weather puts a real load on them and can uh, put a lot of stress on the engine. But if you keep it nice and warm, that makes things so much easier. Well, as you can see, if you plan ahead for RVing in cold weather, it's very doable. It's not, it's manageable. It's not really a problem. And hopefully the list I've given you today will provide you with some ideas to make cold weather RVing more comfortable, more safe, and keep your rig, rig protected while you're in cold weather. Well, that's it for now. Have safe and happy travels, my friends. Until next time.